Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. John Barbieri, a board certified dermatologist and acne expert. In this video, I wanna go over everything when it comes to over-the-counter acne care for teens and young adolescents. We're gonna talk about cleansers, moisturizers, sunscreens, active ingredients like salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide, and adapalene, as well as spot treatments. Now, before we go into specific products, I wanna talk about a fundamental principle when it comes to treating acne and that is that consistency beats intensity every day of the week. We need to create acne regimens that are both tolerable and feasible. Now when I say tolerable, it's something that our skin can handle. This means we don't necessarily need the strongest ingredient out there. We don't need to go for the highest percentage we can find of things. Sometimes actually a lower percentage can work better because it's gonna cause less irritation, it's gonna disrupt the skin barrier less, and it's gonna actually help treat acne more effectively. Similarly, we need things to be feasible. Some regimen that's so complex and has so many steps that we can't actually stick to it every day, that's not gonna work. Even the fastest acne treatments really take about eight to 12 weeks of consistent use to see results. So acne treatment takes patience, but it also takes consistency, something that we can actually do that's feasible and tolerable. Now, when it comes to treating acne, we have a few active ingredients that are in the over-the-counter space. The first one I want to talk about is salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid. It's lepophilic. What this means is that it really gets into oily stuff. So it's great for people who have more oily skin. And it also means it can help get into pores to help break up blackheads and whiteheads. This is a really nice starting acne treatment. You can start with something like a 2% salicylic acid cleanser. And I'll put a couple of examples here and down below as well. These are often pretty gentle and easily tolerated, though they can sometimes cause irritation if overused. In addition to salicylic acid cleansers, we also have benzoyl peroxide containing products. And benzoyl peroxide is one of our best acne treating ingredients. This can help to kill acne bacteria. It can also help to unclog stuck pores. Benzoyl peroxide is available in a variety of strengths, and it can be found in both leave-on products that are meant to be put on the skin and stay there, as well as in washes and cleansers. For the face, I like to use a 4% or 5% wash or cleanser. Benzoyl peroxide can be irritating, and so products that are left on the skin or products that are at really high concentrations, like 10%, can often be too irritating for people and it can limit their ability to be effective. In addition, when we look at studies comparing different strengths of benzoyl peroxide, anything above 4 or 5% on the face doesn't seem to really work better, but does cause more irritation and dryness and side effects. So on the face, again, I really don't like to go above four or 5%, and I tend to prefer washes over leave-on products because that's gonna help, again, reduce irritation. On the body, that skin is usually stronger. It can handle higher concentrations, and this is where I do think sometimes a 10% benzoyl peroxide cleanser is gonna work better than a four or 5% cleanser. So sometimes for people with really stubborn body acne, using a higher strength benzoyl peroxide cleanser can be helpful. In addition to irritation, benzoyl peroxide can bleach fabrics. And so when we're using leave-on benzoyl peroxide products, you wanna be careful about putting them on like right before bed and bleaching our pillowcases or sheets. Similarly, this can happen with our clothes. So we wanna be thoughtful about how we use them. With cleansers, we want to make sure we rinse them well so we don't end up bleaching the towels. Moving beyond benzoyl peroxide, the third main ingredient that we have over the counter is adapalene. Adapalene is a topical retinoid, and topical retinoids are really one of our foundational acne treatments. They can help to reduce inflammation, they can help to keep stem cells from getting stuck together, and they can also help to open up pores. They're really good for whiteheads and blackheads, but they can also help with more inflammatory acne too. We have a number of topical retinoids that are available by prescription, but now we have adapalene, which is available over the counter. Now, before we talk about how to use adapalene, I just wanna differentiate retinoids like adapalene from retinols, which are available in many over-the-counter products. Retinol is a type of ingredient that's a little bit upstream in pathways to retinoids in the body, they get converted to retinoids. So retinoids tend to be a little bit more potent, a little bit more effective than retinols for acne, and we don't really want to combine them together. It wouldn't make sense to use both a retinol and a retinoid. So for acne, adapalene, a retinoid, can really be a great product. It's also a little bit, again, lipophilic. It likes to get into that oily, pore area, which is where we need it to work to help address acne. 
Now, when using topical retinoids, these can be irritating, just like benzoyl peroxide. And so it's very important to think about moisturizing and hydrating the skin to help prevent irritation. This can be done actually by applying a moisturizer first before applying the adapalene product. And this is gonna help to make that adapalene get distributed more evenly on the skin and get absorbed more slowly into the skin. And then for those who have a lot of dryness or irritation or just more sensitive skin, applying another layer of moisturizer afterward can be helpful. Some people call that the sandwich method. In addition to using moisturizers to help with irritation, when we're using topical retinoids, we want to make sure the start's slow. Again, consistency beats intensity here. With topical retinoids, our skin needs some time to get used to using this new product, and so we really just want to start it about twice a week, like Monday and Friday, and then over a few weeks work our way up to every day as our skin gets used to it. Now for those who find their skin is more sensitive and aren't able to get to using a retinoid every day, this is okay. When you look at head-to-head -head studies of everyday retinoid use versus every other day retinoid use, the every other day regimens work about 80% as well. They're certainly not as good, but they definitely can help and they're substantially less irritating. So for those who do find they just have trouble tolerating topical retinoids, it's okay to be using it just you know, two to three times a week. It doesn't need to be every day. There still can be benefits. So of course, if we're able to get up to using every day, that's gonna work even more. Now moving behind active ingredients, it can also be helpful to incorporate cleansers into what we're doing when we're treating acne. Now one thing I often hear from parents is like, if only my child washed their face more, if they used cleaner sheets, they wouldn't have acne. And while hygiene is an important part of managing acne, it's often not the fundamental issue in acne. This is really a genetic problem. This is really a true medical issue. And so simply just trying to be cleaner is often not going to fully improve acne. That being said, cleansers can be helpful in the management of acne, both in terms of reducing oiliness on the skin and also reducing dirt and debris and other things that can contribute more to having clogged up pores. When it comes to picking a cleanser, it really doesn't matter that much. There are a lot of great brands out there and just getting something that's simple and affordable is what matters most. There's not gonna be a huge difference that people are gonna notice between different brands. That being said, some cleansers are formulated a little better for oily skin, and I'll put some examples here and down below, and other cleansers tend to be formulated a little bit better for those who have dry skin. Again, I'll put some examples here and down below. But outside of picking a cleanser that's right for your skin type, being kind of more dry or oily or combination, outside of that, it doesn't really matter that much which brand you pick or which product you pick. There's no need to have a super expensive cleanser. It's not likely to work that much better than a simple kind of generic one from one of the major uh, brands. Now, in addition to using cleansers sometimes in the morning or in the evening, it can be helpful to use cleansers after sports. So those people who are really active in sports, especially if they're using equipment that causes occlusion in the skin, like helmets or other kinds of padding, that can really sometimes contribute to acne. And making sure that cleanse the skin with a cleanser that has some active ingredients in it, like salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide, right after sports, or just using a generic cleanser or soap can be helpful in trying to get rid of all of that oil and gunk that can get accumulated and driven into the skin by sports equipment to help reduce acne. Some also find that using something like hypochlorous acid spray after or before athletics can help to reduce some of the bacteria on the skin that can contribute to acne and can also be another helpful strategy. Now moving beyond cleansers into moisturizers, this can be really important as part of an acne care regimen. When our skin is dry, that stress skin barrier is going to try to put those oil glands into overdrive to help heal it and hydrate it. And that actually can sometimes lead to acne. So as paradoxical and backwards as one might think, moisturizing the skin can actually help reduce oiliness and help the skin barrier function better. In addition, when we have a damaged skin barrier, that just generally leads to inflammation in the skin, and inflammation is a key part of acne. So by helping our skin barrier heal, that's going to help reduce inflammation, that's going to help with acne too. And then of course, as we mentioned, some of our classic active ingredients for acne, like benzoyl peroxide and topical retinoids, can be irritating to the skin. And so using moisturizers can help to prevent and address that irritation. When it comes to picking a moisturizer in general, products that are a little bit thicker are gonna work more than products that are thinner. There are a number of different moisturizers out there. Ones that have in them things like ceramides and sometimes niacinamide can be helpful for those with acne prone skin. So those are things to look for in the ingredients. And I'll put a couple examples here and below. That being said, some people with acne find that their skin just can't tolerate niacinamide, that it irritates it. 
So while niacinamide can be a helpful acne fighting ingredient, it is not a required ingredient. And for those who notice that niacinamide irritates your skin, it's a good idea to try to look for moisturizers that don't have niacinamide in them. Some people have also found that moisturizers that have dimethicone or vitamin B5 in it, the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast is a great example of one of these, can be helpful to soothe the skin and also to help improve acne. It can be a very nice nighttime moisturizer. Now, when it comes to taking a sunscreen for acne-prone skin, as we've discussed in some other videos on the channel, there's no necessarily right or wrong answer here. It's gonna depend a lot on personal preferences. We wanna look for sunscreens that have an SPF of at least 30 and ideally even 40 or more to try to help sun from exacerbating issues on the skin, especially for those who get dark marks left behind by acne. It's really important to use sunscreen to prevent the sun and UV from turning on those pigment cells in the skin and making dark marks worse. When it comes to sunscreens, there's really two main kinds of sunscreens. There's organic sunscreens that have what some people call chemical filters, and there are inorganic sunscreens that use things like zinc and titanium dioxide to help block the UV radiation from the sun. Both of these can be helpful for acne-prone skin. Ones that use organic filters sometimes are gonna be a little bit more lightweight and less likely to leave a cast. Ones that use inorganic filters are typically gonna be potentially less irritating for those who have sensitive skin and also maybe a little bit more likely to leave a white cast is sort of the downside to them. But there are many newer formulations of sunscreens using inorganic filters that are quite tolerable, even for people who have darker skin tones and might commonly run to issues. And I'll put a couple of examples that I like down here and below. When choosing a sunscreen, it can also, again, similar to moisturizers, be helpful to look for ones that have ingredients in them like niacinamide that can be helpful for acne prone skin. Again, with that copy being that if you notice niacinamide irritates your skin, try to avoid it. But for many, this can be helpful for acne. Sunscreen is also critically important for people who are using topical retinoids. Whether you use it in the morning or at night, topical retinoids will make your skin more sensitive to the sun. And using sun protection is important to try to help reduce getting irritation and skin damage as a result of a side effect of using those topical retinoids. Now moving on to spot treatments for acne, there are two main approaches that I like to use here. One is using kind of a higher concentration of acne fighting ingredients like benzoyl peroxide. And there's a product from La Roche-Posay called Epiclar Duo, which has 5.5% benzoyl peroxide and also it has LHA in it, which is kind of similar to salicylic acid. And these can help to open up pores and kill acne bacteria. I find this product's a little bit too intense to use on the whole face. It can cause irritation, but when used as spot treatments, I think it can be very helpful. In addition to using active ingredients, we can use things like hydrocolloid patches, also known as pimple patches. And these work by having in it this hydrocolloid material that helps to kind of suck up water and oil. So it can help to pull that gunk out of the pores, especially for those more inflammatory kind of papules and pustules in acne. These can be very helpful to help them resolve faster in a very gentle way. When I'm picking a hydrocolloid patch, I tend to pick ones that are just a straight normal patch, not ones that have any active ingredients in them because I find that those can sometimes be too irritating. So I prefer just the generic hydrocolloid patches. Though some people will find that ones that have active ingredients in them like salicylic acid work even better. I'll put a couple of examples here and below. Again, similar to cleansers, I don't think it really matters what brand you go with. These are all very similar. They all use very similar technology. I think just finding one's affordable and you like how it looks and feels on your skin is what matters the most. In the last section I wanna talk about sequelae of acne, specifically dark marks and red marks. When we think about breakouts, we talk about the lesions themselves, and we've discussed many ways to help treat and prevent breakouts earlier. But acne can leave behind dark marks and red marks, I think especially in those who have darker skin tones, and these can stick around for months. Sometimes this is more bothersome than the acne itself. And so it's very important for us when we're treating acne, not just to treat the acne, but to make sure we're thinking about the sequelae and marks that get left behind. When it comes to treating these marks, as one might think, stopping the acne is the most important thing. If we can get rid of the acne itself, we can prevent the breakouts, we're gonna prevent the marks as well. And so making sure that we have a really good acne regimen going is the number one, number two, and number three most important thing when it comes to treating dark or red marks is treating the underlying acne. But beyond that, we can be thoughtful about picking ingredients that are gonna both help to treat acne and also help to treat the marks that are left behind. The first one here, topical retinoids. So again, adapalene, that's great for treating acne, but it also helps turn over the skin. It can be very valuable for treating acne dark marks. In addition to this, using azelaic acid, and there's some, a number of good 10% over-the-counter products that are available, 
This can help to turn down the pigment cells in the skin and it's a little bit good at treating acne. So this can be a great ingredient for those who have acne and who get dark marks left behind by their acne. Glycolic acid toners can also be useful for helping to kind of turn over the skin, to gently exfoliate the skin, to help get rid of acne dark marks. And glycolic acid 7% from the ordinary is a very inexpensive and nice product that a lot of people find helpful. And then finally, there's some other pigment correcting products. There are things like tranexamic acid that's in a lot of over-the-counter products. There are some new products from La Roche-Posay that contain the ingredient melicil that can again help kind of turn down that pigment production process. These can all be helpful strategies when it comes to treating acne dark marks in addition to some of the other things that we discussed. So to summarize, when it comes to treating acne in adolescents and young adults, the, one of the most important things is making sure that we're doing something that is going to be feasible and tolerable. So not overdoing it, not using too many products, not making something so complex that we can't actually adhere to it. Because again, consistency is the name of the game here. We need something that we can do and that we can do over a period of time. So it's going to take some time for that acne to improve. When it comes to picking products, starting with the salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide cleanser can be a great, simple, initial strategy for managing acne. We can then build onto that and add something like a topical retinoid, like a dapoline, to get better control of acne. We can use some other products to help with dark marks that can also help with acne too, like azelaic acid or glycolic acid. And then together, if we're having issues like irritation, we want to include some moisturizing products like we've discussed. For anyone with acne, especially those using things like topical retinoids that are going to make us more sensitive to the sun, we want to incorporate sun protection and sunscreens into the morning routine. And then when it comes to other things, we really just want to keep it simple. It's fine to use some cleansers. Um, you know, if we're not using one that has active ingredients, fine, just use a gentle cleanser once a day or twice a day in the morning and evening. But overall, we really don't want to overcomplicate things. We want to make sure that we're doing something that's going to actually work. So what could this look like if we were actually making a regimen? This could be doing something like a benzoyl peroxide cleanser in the morning when we wake up, then using a sunscreen that's at least SPF 40 to 50, then in the evening applying moisturizer and an adapalene 0.1% over-the-counter product, and then potentially some more moisturizer for those with dry skin. And honestly, doing a regimen like that is going to go quite far for those who have kind of mild to moderate acne. And if that's not enough, often, adding more steps or creating some complicated 10-step thing with all different products is probably not going to do the job. And someone whose acne doesn't get better with a simple regimen like that might benefit from talking to their primary care doctor or a dermatologist about some prescription treatment options for acne, like different prescription topical ingredients or even sometimes pill medicines for acne. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot to me to have your support. And ask me your questions about acne in the comments below. Until next time, see ya.